Hey everyone, this is Andrew Ty and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I have a MacBook Pro 2012 and today we're going to be cloning our data onto the solid state drive. So this originally came with an internal SATA disk, which is a mechanical hard drive. And these get really, really slow and they're going to be massively improved by upgrading to a solid state drive. And today I'm going to show you how to basically clone your data onto the solid state drive and then install it into the MacBook Pro 2012. So basically this is a crucial BX500. It's a 480 gigabyte drive, basically 500 gigabytes in size. And this is going to be relatively fast storage storage speed. So it's good for beating operating systems off where you can put data on it too. And we're going to be doing the clone onto here. So the other piece of this puzzle is the Sabrent USB enclosure for 2.5 inch drive. So this is going to fit into this drive here and we're going to be able to access it using this USB cord. So I'm going to leave a link to both of these devices in the description and you're going to be able to order them from Amazon quite easily. So these drives are pretty great because they fit exactly into this slot here for the 2.5 inch drive and they're also very common and relatively cheap as well. So the inside of the drive looks like this and this has the standard 2.5 inch SATA connectors here so that's data and power. And then the way that this enclosure works is that it's completely toolless so all you have to do is basically slip the cover off here and then we're going to install the SATA disk into here. So what you want to do is basically line up the connectors like so and we just slide it in like this. So we have the connector for the power and the data and we just slide them in like that and then it should just fit in like so. So that's all connected up. Then we're going to put the enclosure back on. Then we're going to make sure that this power cable is turned from off to on. So that's on now. Then we're going to plug it into our USB port. So when this USB drive is connected up, you'll see it light up for the first time there, and then we're ready to move on to the next step. So next I'm gonna do is do a search for Carbon Copy Cloner. Then I wanna find this website, bombish.com. I'm gonna leave a link to this in the description. Then we're just gonna to go to the download page of bombish.com. So once we're on the Carbon Copy Cloner download page, we're gonna find a version of Carbon Copy Cloner that works for this. So we're running a high zero on here, so we're gonna to have to use Carbon Copy Cloner 5. So we're gonna scroll down here and click Download CCC 5. This is gonna work for most versions, especially on this particular version of the MacBook Pro. So just let this file download, it's 20 megabytes in size. So Carbon Copy Cloner is now in our downloads folder. We're gonna go ahead and double click on this now. Here it's asking us whether we want to open up Carbon Copy Cloner. I'm going to press open here. Here it's saying that we need to move Carbon Copy Cloner to the application folder. So we're going to press move here. So here we're going to press agree to the terms and conditions. And then we're going to do the free trial. So in order for the Carbon Copy Cloner to see the external drive, we're going to have to format this one first. So what we're going to do is to do a search in Spotlight here in the top right and go to Disk Utility, press return. So with our drive connected, it's going to say the disk inserted is not readable by the computer. So what we're going to do is click the initialize button. So within disk utility, we're going to click on Sabrent Media and we're going to click the Arrays button here. So what we're going to do is to format this as APFS as that's the most compatible drive. If you ever want to upgrade the macOS operating system in the future, you're going to need APFS. So normally what I call this is Macintosh SSD and then I'll click the Arrays button here. So now that's done, we're going to press done here and then we're going to exit out of this. And now within Carbon Copy Cloner, we can now set the Macintosh SSD as a destination. So you can know that this is an external drive because it's orange. That just signifies that it's been plugged in via USB. And the source, we're going to select the Macintosh HD. So the Macintosh HD is the internal drive here. And what we're going to do is leave safety net on. Then we're going to press the clone button here. Here it's asking us to install a privileged tool. We're going to press yes. We're going to type in our password and press return. So now it's starting the clone process. So all of the data is going to be cloned from the internal drive to the external drive. This might take a really long time. So we're connected via USB 3, so it should be relatively fast. However, because the internal drive is a little bit damaged, it's going to run quite slowly. So be prepared to wait several hours because we need to copy 365 gigabytes of data. We're talking at least four or five hours probably. So anyway, just let this run. So the carbon copy clone has now completed. So all of our data has been moved from here to here. This only took six hours. So this really depends on the speed of your hard drive. Often hard drives will deteriorate, which is why we're going ahead, which is why we're going ahead and replacing it. So what I want to do now is to shut down the computer. I'm going to press the Apple logo here and then press shut down. Then we're going to continue to the next step. Once it's shut down, I'm going to go ahead and shut the computer, take the power out, take the USB cable out, and then flip it over. Okay, so for this, we need a simple screwdriver. So there's a simple Phillips head screwdriver. I'm gonna take off all of the screws. So there's a screw missing here. We've got screws here. So just be aware, the long ones are these three here. The rest of them are short ones. 
Now we're going to open up the back cover by lifting this up at the back. So our internal hard drive is here. This is the one that's causing so much issue. I'm going to be replacing this one with the solid state drive. So first thing I'm going to do is to pull out the power cable. So we can just use a fingernail here and pull out the power socket. So that's because the battery, we don't want that to feed the current into the logic board. We're going to be messing around with this. So we don't want anything to short by accident. So do this first. Next thing is to take out the bracket with the Phillips head screwdriver. So this is the hard drive bracket on the side like so, so we don't need this. And then what we're gonna do is to pull out the hard drive. So there's a SATA cable here, I can use my fingernail to pull this away from there. And now we have our hard drive here. So here I've got the correct size Torx screwdriver T6 and we're just gonna remove these side brackets here. So take those mounting screws off. So now that it's free of the mounting screws, you can put that to the side. So this is the solid state drive enclosure that we've carefully cloned all our data to. So we're just going to take off the cover again and then we're going to lift it out and then pull this out like so. So at this stage, what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to put this into the enclosure and then we can use this as a kind of backup for later, just in case. So here I've got my solid state drive. I'm going to put the mounting screws onto here so that it fits in correctly. Okay, so all the mounting screws are there, all four of them. And so what we're gonna do is to put this back into the SATA cable. And uh, if we just line them up the data and the power cable like so, just push them together like that. And now that's all connected to SATA. Then I'm gonna put this solid state drive in like so. So put this side in first and then pop that down like that. Then we're gonna get our mounting bracket and put it back into here. And we're gonna use our Phillips head screwdriver and basically screw this back in. And uh, if you can, it's probably a good idea to clean up a little bit if you have a lot of dust. But basically at this stage, we're ready to go. We'll plug in the power cable for the battery back into the motherboard. And basically we're done. Right back on and we're gonna proceed from there. So these three long screws at the top. So those three there and then the rest around the side. Okay, so now it's done, we're gonna flip it over and then basically start up the laptop again. Now loading from the solid state drive instead of the internal hard drive. So now that we've upgraded to the solid state drive, this computer is booting up and running much faster now. So for example, here I can load up new windows of Safari, it's just gonna come up instantly. It's far better than using the old internal hard drive, which is completely slowed down. So this is working much better than before. So anyway, I do highly recommend this particular fix. It works really well, especially for this particular model of the MacBook Pro 2012, which is the last upgradable MacBook in reality. So anyway, I hope you found this video useful. I've got lots of other tutorials like this on my YouTube channel, so please check it out. If you found the video useful, please like, please subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.